Welcome to Alternative Wide World. We have a special guest on the show. It's Rob Clories. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Great yeah, it's great, great, great to talk about your project, Split Second um, Meltdown. What a, what a name. That, that, that's, a, that's an incredible name. We want to hear all about the, the concept behind that. We understand you come from New York City. Uh, if you could give us some background, you know, you know how you grew up, you know, some of your, your favorite music that you fell in love with and, and, and how you, you know, grew in this uh, alternative music world. Well, I, um, I, I'm primarily, I, I started out in most of my career as, uh, as uh, a keyboardist and, and pianist. And um, uh, so I took the piano lessons, the, you know, the classical piano lessons and the, uh, but then I got interested in rock and roll, not, not, you know, there was, uh, 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 you know, I, I gravitated toward the, 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 the rock keyboardists like John Lord, Deep Purple and Ray Manzarek, uh, um, you know, like the, a lot of the sixties and seventies, uh, rock, not, not so much prog at that point. Um, but, um Rolling Stones and Billy Preston and 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 I really like I really like that that stuff so I grew up listening to all the classics uh you know Led Zeppelin I love the keyboards and Led Zeppelin and you know the Beatles had some great keyboards and so you know I was trying to find a way to put keyboards in rock and roll Pink Floyd you know sure well, you know, you know growing uh, up in the New York City area, I'm sure you had access to a lot of great shows. What were some of those first shows you saw that really blew your mind, really made you want to do this, you know, for your life? I think the first show I saw was actually Black Sabbath. Uh, Black Sabbath, but uh, I think it was with uh, Dio. I think Dio was uh, singing at that point. Heaven and Hell. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, I, actually, a lot of the a lot of the first shows I saw uh, were pretty much like a guitar, a guitar rock shows, like big, you know, arena, arena shows. And you know, they, uh, they didn't really fe feature, feature the keyboard, but I, I just, you know, I love, I love rock and roll. And yeah, it was, New York City was a good place to see shows. There were always big shows. Uh, rock radio was, was big. Um, so there was a lot of rock and roll happening. Um, yeah, you know, uh, Heaven and Hell had some keyboards. It wasn't in the foreground like Tony right. Iommi was, but you, you, right. you know, it, it's those elements of mixing, you, you know, uh, classic keyboards with, you know, rock and alternative ideas. Were any of those European keyboard acts like Kraftwerk or any of those uh, of interest to you? No, no, it was, uh, uh, I, I didn't really get, get into that that stuff uh at that point it was all about a, a guitar rock really and i i didn't even play guitar at that point um but that's what i that's what i i loved to listen to you know and just seeing how i how, how i could fit in um you know in that in that in that scenario and then and then getting 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 a bit older when i started to play professionally around uh, new york city it was pretty much doing anything you know just playing keyboards in any every every band any and and every band just trying to uh you know kind of find my way and make a and make a living and then you know later on i got to play with a lot of you know like people that had 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 records and uh i guess we'll get into that but um you know kind of climbing up the ladder of of uh you know just um get, getting myself out there and and becoming a uh, you know, becoming a name around, around New York. Yeah. Well, I know there's a lot of studios, a lot of sessions, a lot of artists, people coming in from out of town. Uh, why, don't, why don't you talk about some of these collaborations, like with Jesse Mullen from uh, Degeneration, you know, what, what you've done with yeah. him and what you learned from working with Jesse. Well, pr probably like, uh, probably right, right before Je Jesse, I, cause I actually started playing with Jesse long, uh, 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 quite a while ago, probably in the early two, two, probably 2002 when he first started his solo record. But prior to that, I, I, I was, I, I, I was uh, playing with John Popper from blues traveler. I was in his band. 
Um, uh, he had done a solo record, we had done a tour, and then I hooked up with the Spin Doctors guys, like, you know, like these East Coast, New, New, New York guys. I was in a band with uh, Chris and uh, Aaron from the Spin Doctors. And then I, then I kind of, then I met Jesse and uh, Jesse kind of brought this punk, punk thing. I can't kind of came from that kind of background and he wanted to incorporate keyboards into his music was going for a little softer like singer songwriter thing and um uh um uh it was just it was uh it was uh it was cool to play with jesse uh he had a lot of you know he had a lot of friends he 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 brought in ryan adams and billy joe armstrong and you know people like that and um i guess that's when i started playing with a wider range of uh people jesse mallon's friends <laughs> um yeah, yeah well i know you also did some work with colin hay which we all know from you know minute work yeah. which were big you know mtv favorites in the 80s coming out of australia colin's yeah. done a lot of solo work talk, talk about working with him yeah he's he's really great he's a he's he's really talented uh uh good songs really good really good musician i did a couple tours with with um with colin went to australia ate some vet vegemite uh which i didn't really care for but th i could at least say that i ate some vegemite with colin hay and you know it impressed like two people but uh, but uh but it, you know it was just fun but uh but yeah colin colin was great uh we're still friends and 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 stuff but um colin hay and then after Colin Hay came the Black Crows, that's sort of like the big rock and roll gig that I did for like a year. Yeah, talk talk and, about how that happened. Was it an audition or some some somebody recommended you? Yeah, I think some. Well, somebody recommended me to 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 audition. Um, well, well, actually, first I I was actually in Rich Robinson's band, so I, I played with Rich for uh, on and off for like a year or two. I was. I think I was still touring with Colin, but I played with Rich. And so between, I mean, I guess Rich, someone recommended me for Rich. So I played with Rich and then Rich threw me into the hat for the Black Crows, which is, which is you know, which is, uh, which is a complicated gig because, you know, everybody knows about those, those, those guys. But, but I auditioned with about like, I don't know, I don't know how many people, 10 or 20 people and, and, I, and I got the gig which was, which was, um, you know, I was always a fan of those guys and never in a million years I ever thought that I'd be playing with them because they had a keyboard guy, you know, I just, but um, I guess that was one example of me uh, putting it out there in the universe and it, and it came back to me. So, um, so, so that was, yeah, that, that was a cool experience to play those songs because um, I really liked a lot of their uh, material and it was very challenging because um, usually you have to usually learn 20 or 25 songs for a set or something. And, and I, I had to learn like 125 songs. Um, and, uh, and, and, you, you and you usually every, every song on every yeah. album. I did, yeah. I had to, you know, like like ninety originals and like 30, 30 covers. And usually, artists like to rehearse before their tour. That's a big thing. Singers love to rehearse, but there was there was there was no rehearsal. So so the rehearsal was the sound check. So that that was probably one of the most challenging um, gigs that I had. But but I you know but I really learned my shit for like two weeks, and I and I you know and I and I nailed it. So that, that was very uh, satisfying and, and gratifying and, you know, pat myself on the back for like a second. <laughs> so, so did Rich kind of warn you that he and his brother kind of had, had like an edgy uh, no. back and forth? No, no, no. I, he, he, I just, I just heard stories and then there was, you know, there was a, there was, you know, there was there was friction you know as soon as i kind of was was there i mean i think i mean honestly i think that even though i auditioned with a lot of people and got the gig like chris wanted somebody else for, for the gig you know and it's like you know he's the singer it's you know it's kind of his band so there was i mean 
he was really he was really nice to me and i i did a really good job so i think he really appreciated me and but you know there was always the friction you know like the brotherly friction i never experienced that before and it was quite uncomfortable um just to be you know in that sort of scene but you know you you make the, ve the best of it but it, you know, it's, I guess it, it could be the same in a lot of work environments, you know, I mean, every work, a lot of work environments there, are, there are, some are good and some are, you know, are, uh, you know, there's friction. So, uh, you know, li life experience, but. Um, yeah, I guess it's, it's kind of like the Oasis Gallagher brothers, right. you know, they they, yeah. they grew up and they had these like issues when they were like three and five years old. So it just. It it never changes. They could be twenty five and twenty eight, yeah. and there's still yeah. that, you, you know, attitude like you're my punk brother, and yeah. it's my way, or you're the bigger yeah. brother, and you always get your way, and it's not going to be that way. Yeah. Now you know all these guys are in their fifties, and they're you know, and they're, and they're still you know, and they're still at it, and I guess they come out of retirement when they need money, and. Uh, you know, uh, hey, you know what? Ther Therapy is a great thing. It, I mean, maybe in the old days it was taboo, but th therapy can really help. Well, I guess if and, you're in a big band, you can have like se separate transportation and separate hotels and separate dressing rooms. You know, it's, it always amazed me the Ramones, you know, didn't get along. Joey yeah. and Johnny did not get along and they're stuck in a van. They're, they're in like right. a a passenger van for years touring yes yeah yeah i've heard those stories man yeah that is like that is that's that must have been very challenging to be in, traveling with the ramones <laughs> it, yeah yeah it was it was probably a little a little easier with the black crows and although although we we, we were all in the same bus so it wasn't like you know they had their own buses you know but Right. You can, you can but, you get so far away from each other. But um, yeah. I, I know you also work with Alejandro Escovito. T talk about, you know, working with him. Yeah. Al is so cool, man. He's a really beautiful dude. Uh, loving, really, uh, and, and really great songs and just really deep heart, heartfelt, you know, heartfelt songs and lyrics and uh great great musician yeah i yeah i i did a bunch of dates with al uh, a couple years ago and um i was just uh yeah he was he's he's kind of a road dog too and um i know he was really so i'm in the beginning of the year he was very tired or maybe it was end of last year and i meant to call him because now that there have been no gigs for like six months uh I'm hoping that he's caught up on his rest and he's uh, ready for this thing to be over this pandemic and get out there again. Cause he's, he's a really, he's really special man. Alejandro. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how, how did you learn the difference, you know, between the recording studios in New York where all the work goes down and then all of a sudden you're, you're in, you know, a van or, a bus and you're in States you've never visited, you know, how, how did you kind of, you, you know, acclimate to the time, you know, not on stage? Uh, I guess you just uh, do. Well, I, 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 I uh, you, you mean, you mean, you mean during, during this time? You mean during, yeah, during well, not, dur not just during this time, but I mean, early on, you know, when oh, you, when you hit the, start hitting the road right, and you're right. used to doing sessions and all that. And now it's like, y you know, 20 hours of travel and a, you know, hour on stage, you know? Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty grueling, man. You know, it's like, uh, like the whole traveling thing and, tra and trains, planes and cars. It's like, it's, uh, it takes, it takes a lot of, out of you. Um, um, you know, on, on one hand, it's fun to wake up in another city, but it, it it's actually, uh, you're kind of, I mean, I was happy when the tour, when the tours were over and I could have some downtime and I could, get creative in the studio but you know now of course i'm itching to get out of the studio <laughs> and, uh, and uh play and play some gigs but um yeah it's it's an adjustment it's a mental sort of uh, adjustment 
Well, especially when you're changing time zones, going over to Australia, it's like a completely flipped, you know, know. climate. And, you know, know, when it's winter here, it's summer there and and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, How how do you get used to the uh, change in radical time zones in Europe or places like that? Uh, Well, for uh, 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 for me, it's uh, it's 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 not easy. It's just, uh, you know, like the jet lag is pretty killer uh especially coming from you know like the far east like that you know coming back that 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 way is much worse than coming from europe because I, i'm in new york so europe is pretty close uh you know um yeah when, and, when it's a different day you know they're they're thursday and we're wednesday that, that <laughs> really messes with you i know right <laughs> well, well now you, you know t- talk about your project it's split second it's meltdown second. How, yeah. how did you come up with that name? What's the significance of that? And, you know, what, what does it mean to you? What's this vehicle all about? Yeah, split second meltdown. I guess I was just thinking about how quickly things can just go get, get, get fucked, you know? I mean, things, things can really just go to shit very, very, uh, very, very quickly. And I guess that was kind of the main thought I had when I was thinking, hmm, split second meltdown like you, you know just you know just the tide can turn really really uh really quickly it yeah yeah it took me a while to think of a name um because i typically don't really like things that i come up with and i knew that i'd have to live with this for a while and then I got worried because I read an interview with Dave Grohl that or, uh, he said something to the effect that he wished that he hadn't named his band the Foo Fighters or, or something. And I was thinking, really? Oh, I think that's a cool name. But, it, you know, he, 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 he you know, I don't want to be like that, you know, and think, oh, it splits like a meltdown. I mean, I wish I had less sil- syllables like the Foo Fighters is kind of slips off the tongue you know pearl jam i mean that's kind of one, one kind of year. uh <laughs> you know yeah split second meltdown but then you know there 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 are a lot of queens of the stone age that, that has a lot of syllables too so but i i settled on it and so far i don't have a problem with it and i don't hate it so that's a good thing yeah well i know it's a self-titled ep yeah so you you've got five songs on there nobody yeah. left but me is the video and single um Talk about making this record. I know you got some collaborators on here, Bob yeah. and Kelly from Monster Magnet and Jimmy from A Wall Nation and JD from yeah. Black Label Society. And you, yeah. you know, talk, to talk about you know the the players and how you put all these songs together. Well, uh, my my initial session I did a few uh, a few year, years ago. Um, you know, I never did a solo record before because I didn't really have anything to say. And now that I've like been around for a while, I feel like I have th- things things that I, I can verbalize. And music always came to me really easily, but lyrics uh, did uh, did did not. And I guess I just got to the point where I had some stuff to say, and I didn't want to make a piano record. Um, I really like rock i like all kinds of rock i like hard rock i like you know grunge and stuff like that so i um i live in new jersey actually uh right outside uh new york city and jd uh john DeSurio from black label society and bob pantella they're they're jersey guys and i knew i wanted a heavier sound um so i went to john jd's house and um we did a session we did like four songs and um, I had a, a great guitarist, Ken, Kenny Dubman, play guitar um, uh, on a couple of songs. And then I just kind of kicked, kicked those songs around for a while. And I wanted to kind of figure out how I could incorporate keyboards into, into the heavy uh, uh, guitar sound, you know, like a lot of people do it. Um, I didn't know if I wanted it to be electronica, like, you know, like uh, I really like uh, Ramstein and stuff like, uh, I like music like that. Um, so, and, uh, so then I decided, you know, I don't want to use all those songs and like a couple of them. And I did another session at the beginning of the year with some friends from LA, uh, Jimmy Messer and, um, Charlie Paxson. And, um, I did a few more songs 
And then I figured, hey, and now I have all this downtime during this pandemic, and now is a great time for me to uh, to to come out with something. So I decided on the five songs instead of like eight or nine songs. Um, but um, um, yeah, that's how that went down with the with the with the development of the songs. I'm really hoping to do. Uh, I have plans of re uh, releasing other stuff. I just got my feet wet with the Split Second Meltdown EP, and I'm, you know, pretty happy with the way it's been going. Well, I know you've got songs like Flesh and Blood and Heavy Song and Chasing a Dream and, and yeah, the, the End of Your World. Are there any any stories behind any of those? Any special, you know, messages or any anything you're trying to get across? Well, uh, well, flesh and blood was uh, my uh, that that was the first that's the first single that that, that that was the really my experience with this whole uh, with the whole pan pandemic and just being stuck quarantined in New York. Um, that's what that song is about, um, and just you know the fragility of uh, life. Really, I mean, we're, we're only flesh and blood. That's what that song is about. Um, nobody left but me is from written from the perspective that I would imagine. Uh, person coming from south of the border uh, to try to come to the United States for a better life or, or for that matter any any immigrant like a Middle Eastern immigrant trying to go to Europe and assimilate trying to get there for a better life with their family um, that's that's the that's the current um, single nobody left but me um, with the video um, heavy song is about just personal De you know demons and and just uh well not demons just 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 some just some personal heavy shit um same same as uh same with um on the for uh ch chasing a dream um and the end of your world is about is about chris cornell uh i i i was a big 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 fan of his and just incredible talent i got to meet him once and um uh that's what that song is about just me being really sad and upset uh about the passing of of chris and um so that's what that song is about yeah he had such a such a voice from sound garden yeah. and audio slave you know and and he was uh you, you know he was a calming presence i'm sure when you met him he was you know, he's laid back. He's, he, you could tell he's serious, but you know, there's a lot going on inside yeah. of him that, that comes out when he sings, but you, yeah. you know, you, you it, it, it was so shocking him. And then a week later with Chester Bennington from Lincoln park, that these guys both yeah. went for really unexplained reasons. There wasn't really any cause and you, you yeah. know, two, two huge bands just taken off the map. Yeah, it's 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 it upsets me. I I, I you know I, I still think about it. And it just it just really unsettling and upsetting. But uh, you know, obviously there was some you know it was you know something 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 wrong or you know I I don't know. But but yeah, it's uh, it it still upsets me. You know, I mean, just the great talent and you know just the just you know the just the like the loss of uh of a of a person who was you know i don't know just giving giving music to the world like you know millions of people lo loved loved the guy's music and he had a gift you know i say in the in the song he had a, a gift from god you know um whether or not you believe in god he, 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 had, a, he had a gift but uh yeah, yeah so. it, it, it was something you can't learn. You can develop something like that, but you, you know he had a he had a gift that you know somehow was in him. You know you you can't just learn to sing like that. You know it's nah. got to some of that's got to be inside of you. Are there any other of these you know alternative icons of the '80s or '90s that that you still look up to that are still making music today, and you're just in awe of you know their body of work. Yeah, well, Dave Dave Grohl is very inspiring to me. Um, yeah, I just love what, uh, the path that he's that he's on, and I, you know, like you know, the energy and the, and the, and you know, and the you know the positivity uh, and um, 
yeah, Dave Grohl and Allison Chains is still at it. And, uh, you know, I dig those guys. I like, I like those guys a lot. How about the Nine Inch Nails guys? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've never met those guys. But, yeah, that's, I mean, I love, I love those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Nine Inch Nails is great. And, you, you know, yeah, oh, oh, you know, those nine, the, you know, the nineties guys that are still, still doing it. I mean, they're yeah, all smashing pumpkins, still doing they're all, it. They're all inspiring. Yeah. Yeah. The DeLeo brothers from uh, Stone Temple Pilots and, you know, uh, Hey, you know, Guns N' Roses, you know, and, you know, yeah. Uh, well, 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 Rob, we're, we're super excited about the split second meltdown project in, in closing all that you've learned, all your thousands of, you know, hours, you know, recording and being around these greats and, and touring and performing live. What, 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 what's something that you can impart on young creative people coming up today? Because, uh, you know, there is no app, there's no shortcut, there's no YouTube video that's just instantly going to put you at any of these levels. What, 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 what can you impart them to inspire them to greatness? Well, uh, just, uh, just keep on, keep on practicing your craft. Uh, that's really the most important thing you can do. And, um, you know, I guess uh, uh, with, 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 with YouTube and stuff, it's really, uh, it's a great, a great way to get, to get yourself out there. Just practice, practice your instrument and get, and, you know, get really good and have an open mind about collaborating with, with uh with people it's great to have your own ideas but your ideas can improve uh with with other people with with collaboration so practice collaborate and uh as soon as you uh are able to perform uh go out and perform because that builds builds confidence and uh well yeah you know, do it do it for the love of it i mean it you're it, not gonna get rich quick you better love what you do uh, uh, yeah 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 I, I mean that's the most important thing i mean you really have to love it and you really have to get enjoyment it's a great escape uh you know music is a great escape uh from from life you know and um uh yeah 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 you have to love it and you know believe in yourself and and reach 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 high you know shoot 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 high you know and uh, uh and just get out there and do it dream big well our guest has been rob cloris from split second meltdown it's been a real pleasure rob we're going to spread the word on your ep and look thank forward you. to checking checking in with you down the road and chart your progress thank you so much for joining us on the show all right th thanks for having me